Good morning. Yesterday we saw through the example of the prophet Daniel that one of the ways Christians can witness to others is by the way we set about the ordinary things that we have to do day by day. For the most part, we aren't high-flying civil servants like Daniel. We're not all brain boxes, but we can all witness. If we're Christians, we witness, for example, by our care for those who are often neglected, the less attractive people in our neighbourhood. If we take place, part in sport, we witness by our commitment to playing hard, but playing fair. People are not going to take what we have to say about Christ seriously if they see us as lazy, disagreeable or aloof. Some of those around us love to find Christians who don't seem to come up to the mark. They level at us the charge of hypocrite and are glad to do that. Because if our lives don't show that Jesus makes a difference, then they don't need to bother listening to what we have to say. Daniel believed because he had heard God's word and the Holy Spirit had opened his mind and heart to understand and believe. And his faith was clearly demonstrated in his daily life and work. As a result, the king was pleased with him, but other top officials were angry. They got the king to make a law against praying. Listen to what we read in Daniel chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. The administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, O King Darius, live forever! The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisers and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or man, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, O king, issue the decree and put it into writing, so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Daniel's enemies knew that the mainspring of his life was his relationship with God demonstrated in talking to God in prayer. And once that document had been signed, the pressure was on Daniel. For royal decrees had to be obeyed or else. I wonder what you would have done had you been in Daniel's shoes. I might have uh, tried to pray secretly or suspend prayer for 30 days or so. Daniel's response was quite, quite remarkable. Verse 10. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Just as he had done before. That's the key. It wasn't blind panic. He had made a habit of praying like that, just as we need to develop habits of prayer. Sometimes 
being a Christian can be tough. Sometimes we face, as Daniel did, situations which require courage and determination. Situations where, with God's help, we need to draw on and act on what we believe. Daniel stood his ground. He continued as before. He kept up his prayers. He kept contact with the God of his life. I'm sure Daniel looked back. He thought like this, God has been with me in the past. He's not changed, so he'll be with me now. These men may want to get rid of me, but the Lord is concerned for me. If you read through chapters 1 to 5 of this book, you will see that indeed God had looked after Daniel through the reign of the Babylonians and now of the Medes and Persians. But did you notice, not only did he pray, he gave thanks. Do we give thanks when life is tough? Was Daniel a masochist who relished the idea of being dinner for a lion? Of course not. He was ordinary flesh and blood like you and me. In the time of trial, he looked back and stood back to see the full picture. And there was something to be thankful for. God was there and God loved him. Daniel believed God could be trusted. So he continued to pray and to thank the Lord who was still on the throne. It's easy to thank God when our lives go smoothly. But God doesn't always keep trouble from our door. He doesn't spare his people from the ups and downs of life. Indeed, those who believe often have a rougher time than those who are ignorant or careless when it comes to the things of God. The Lord permits his children to be tested and tried and to be witnesses to him in those circumstances. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that when Daniel faced terrible circumstances and his faith was challenged, he remained faithful to you. Help us when times come in our lives that cause us to fear and despair, to remember your past blessings to us and maintain our fellowship with you through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.